Greetings YouTube and welcome to Bubble Everything. I'm Bubble and today we're going to be reviewing all of the green cards for the new core set coming out, core set 2021. Um, for Magic the Gathering, of course, there we are. I've done reviews for all the other colors. After this one, the only thing we have left is the multicolored and colorless cards, including lands. So we'll do that just after this one. Hopefully it'll be up pretty soon. And without further ado, let's just get right on into it. Bam! Azusa! We're going to start off with a huge reprint. Um, this is a lovely card to see again, honestly. It, it's kind of just thrown in there. I mean, I like, oh, Teferi is the master of time, so he gets cards from, you know, other parts in time. Okay, so you're reprinting a bunch. Gotcha. Anywho, a three mana, one, two. You may play two additional lands on each of your turns, which is a lot. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and, like, you know, let you know in case you didn't know. There is some reason to ramp. <laughs> Um, Ugin, the original Ugin, like the spirit dragon, not the ineffable, by the way, he's totally effable if you, if you want my opinion, but anyhow, um, so it's like, oh, I definitely want to play this to ramp more, however, if you think about this, first off, the stats and everything, and limited, this is terrible, three mana, one, two is absolutely atrocious, so zero to five limited, I'm sorry, unless you just want it for the value, it's probably worth a few bucks, maybe just take it for that, if it's a digital copy, if you're playing arena, don't don't it's not you you might be able to play one more land one time that's it um but she's got a horrible like you know toughness to her uh as far as standard goes she is ramp on three mana however our ramp currently consists of occasionally the arboreal grazer okay that's cool growth spiral which lets you play a land and draw a card and euro which lets you play land and draw a card and gain life what are we missing with Azusa? We do not draw cards. We just empty some more things onto our hand. From our hand. Ah, excuse me there. Oh my goodness. Oh, the magic gods, they're saying, but wait a minute, what about Amulet Titan? This is standard we're talking about. Get out of here. So, that being said, uh, 0 to 5 in both formats. A very nice reprint. It's better for older formats. It's nice to just keep the value at a reasonable level, and maybe it's going to be enabled now and like historic I guess and pioneer and stuff and you can have some cool plays with that but not standard and not limited burl fist oh is a four mana two three whenever you draw a card it gets plus two plus two until end of turn so basically on the attack it is a four five and on the defense on the defense right or on the defense I got kind of caught between those two words with the same word and I just couldn't get it there damn hmm this requires more beans. I don't know. I just, I just I feel like bean, beans would actually fix the situation here. Anywho, worth noting, you can kind of just use some instant speed card draw during your opponent's turn, and suddenly this is a huge buff. Oh my goodness, double prowess. What? But anywho, um, yeah, that's actually a really nice card. I like it quite a bit. In standard, no, it's just terrible. Just don't bother. But in limited, yeah, this is like a three out of five, I'd say. The fact that on your turn it's a 4-5 at minimum, and then if you draw more cards, it ramps up very, very quickly, is fantastic. If you have this and a couple ops, maybe instead of op, you have a throw a possibility. Maybe you just have some other way to draw cards. Lovely, lovely card. Okay. That said 3 out of 5, right? Yeah, I did. Unlimited. 0 to 5 standard. Cool. Canopy Stalker. 4 mana 4-2 must be blocked if able. And when it dies, you gain one life for each creature that died this turn. You know, if it said when it dies, you draw a card, that'd be cool. It's nice if you also want to get this guy and you attack and then use that as like a decoy for your other things to get through. Because this thing has to be blocked. If your opponent only has like one or two creatures, it just helps you get some more stuff through there. But otherwise, I don't like it. Two out of five and limited because, yeah, I guess it has some utility there. The life gain, though, don't count on that being anything. And in standard, zero out of five. Colossal Dread Maul. Look at this thing. I love just like the poof. Like if I could just poof, and then like there, that's my cosplay. But anywho, <laughs> I say anywho a lot because, you know, I'm just kind of being whatever. So six minutes, six, six trample. Pretty cool. I, I, I like the card. It's, it's solid. In limited, I'll just say three out of five because it's a big thing that has trample that demands an answer. Um, although it doesn't really do anything beyond that, but you can't just chump it all day, because guess what? You can't chump it once, even. It doesn't it doesn't help you. The dinosaur still gets you. The teeth wrap around, because the mouth is large. Um, 
and floppy jaws. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway, um, and standard zero to five. Okay, cultivate. This has a similar issue to Azusa, but it's slightly more, um, slightly better, I'd say. So for three mana, you get one of these classic, classic Kodama's Reach was like the original name for this card, basically. I mean, this is a separate card entirely, but it has like the same effect anyway. Search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal them, put one into the battlefield tapped, and the other into your hand. So, where this is potentially better than, like, you know, the... I'm not going to say it's better than Euro, because Euro on itself is just insane. The fact that it's also a creature and whatnot, and you can replay the abilities. But where this shines is that it gets you from three mana to five mana guaranteed. It puts one on the board and one in your hand. It guarantees you get that five mana turn. So that is some pretty solid ramp, whereas previously, you know, you might sell out on four mana. And that kind of hurts quite a bit. You kind of wait until, see, okay, let's see if I can get more. And if you don't have the right colors, then you can't play Euro even if you have the stuff in the graveyard that you want. So like, well, damn, I need one more green source, but I don't really have it. This completely just mana fixes and whatever. In limited, if you are playing multiple colors and you need the mana fixing, absolutely play this card. If you're not, maybe show some restraint unless you're playing a lot of higher end cards. If your curve tops off around like seven, and you have like a decent number of like four drops and higher, then I would consider playing this thing. If not, then if you're more low to the ground, it's more like, you know, four and below, then leave it alone. In standard, I think this could see some play. I actually really do think this can get somewhere. I'm going to go ahead out on this this limb, this cultivated limb, and say four to five in standard. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You can't, you can't take that away from me because I said it. It's out there in the world. It's on the internet. It will never go away. Okay. For two mana, you get a three, three, drowsing Tyranodon. That's Defender. As long as you control a creature with power 4 or greater, though, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Cool. Uh, worth noting, if you buff this card somehow, I don't know, it's not like they went all these plus up. It's not like we have all these plus one plus one counters just rolling around here. This is like floating, you just pluck them out of the air. Look, there's one right there. We, we do, by the way. We have a few of those in the set. Um, so if you buff him to have at least 4 power, as opposed to just buffing his toughness, I guess, then he will see himself. He will visualize... The monster within and be able to attack off of his own power which is kind of cool otherwise think of it as kind of like a just you know you play it alongside of the things it's very sensible if you want to do this with like with gruel and standard if you want to have this alongside a shield breaker not shield breaker spell breaker um gruel spell breaker that's the one and you play it with the plus one encounter and then this thing gets to attack the turn it can be a little sneaky i wouldn't necessarily make that sort of play this is definitely more of a slower card but the fact that you can kind of get this to work i would say three out of five in limited i think it's a pretty cool card there in standard it's it's gonna be a zero out of five in standard i'm sorry yeah, i'm not sorry but i'm sorry okay uh moving forward elder gargaroth gargareth Gar. Okay, Elder Gar, sure. Uh, five mana, six, six. And this is where we just take a green card, add some stats, and just start putting the words on there. Just give it more effects, give it more things you can do, whatever. Not quite the level of questing beast, but still, just, just throw some more words on there. Give, give some more options. Vigilance, Reach, and Trample. Cool, not haste, but the other three are pretty damn good. Um, whenever Elder Gar attacks or blocks, Choose one, either create a 3-3 green beast creature token, or you gain 3 life, or you draw a card. I mean, green does have some card draw, but this is kind of strange to see that as the third option on this guy. I I, I like it, I just don't know why it's there. Anywho, um, so I guess this is actually a really very, very nice card. Um, helps you stabilize against quite a few things, against mono red especially, against, against any kind of aggro. You can just drop it down there. And then it works on the attack or the block as well, and has vigilance, so it can block like forever. Oh, it's so nice. In in limited, this is a five out of five. This is a bomb. It's it's it's, it's insane. You play this. It's a, a six out of five. It's a twenty out of five. You play this, and you get to untap, or your opponent just attacks into it, and suddenly you're having a great time. In standard, you also still having a really really good time with this card. I'm. It's kind of slow against aggro, but if you can drop this on the board, you are good. So that being said, four to five, just because it costs five mana and it needs to be 
predicated, I guess is a word. Um, you need to clear the board a little bit. You need to do a little bit of softening before you drop this thing on the board. And I guess that's more of a Golgari sort of thing because green doesn't have too much removal in itself. So aside from removing flyers. So you want to, you know, kind of get that out of the way first. Or you can use Gruul and have like Flame Sweep and such. And then you play this when the opponent has like maybe two or three things and you have 10 life, I guess, would be a somewhat suitable amount. And then your opponent's like, well, damn, can't attack into it. Otherwise, they just get life. Can't really attack around it. They're going to get life. Um, and I can't, I can't deal with it because it has six um, toughness. So I, I would need like a Shock and two Bone Crusher Giants. And oh, God, what do I do now? And then they scoop. Then the lightning bolts emit from their forehead. That's how you win in Magic Arena. There's, you have to initiate head lightning. All right, Feline Sovereign. A three mana, two, three cat. Other cats you control get plus one, plus one, and have protection from dogs. Hooray, flavor win, woo. I mean, the Lord effect is fine. The fact that it gives that, but protection from dogs, really? Really? Okay. Watch dogs just be super tier one and this card comes down like, guess what? Cats win the day at this time. Like, oh no. Let's see, what's that last thing to say? Whenever one or more cats you control deal combat damage to a player, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Because that's what cats do. They break things. Um, That's cool. I mean, it's, it's okay. The fact that it only buffs other cats means that it is, you know, a three mana two three. And the fact that there aren't that many cats in this set, there are plenty of cats throughout the history of Magic, don't get me wrong, it's definitely a supported um, archetype or tribe, whatever you want to say. However, in this set, not so much. So because of that, I'm going to give this like a... Hmm, I'll give it a 2 out of 5, because I'll give it a 1 out of 5 and limit it to hell. You don't want to play a 3 mana 2-3. That buffs nothing, and maybe you can destroy an enchantment or something, but yeah, to help with that. Uh, let's see, beyond that, in standard, I'm going to go ahead and say 0 to 5. I don't like it in standard. In other formats, maybe that could be kind of cool, but no, they just printed this to... Why is it rare? Because lords have to be rare? No, they don't, but whatever. Okay. Fierce Empath, look at this 3 mana 1-1. One, one. Oh, look at you. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost 6 or greater. There you go, you got this guy, like, I'm going to find the big guy and tell him. I'm gonna tell mother on you, no, I'm gonna tell it, I'm gonna tell the principal. Oh my god, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. Well, I'm gonna tell the president. Anyhow, uh, so you search for a big creature, you put it into your hand, and you shuffle your library, of course. Uh, in Limited, this has actually more utility, I believe, because... If you have the big creature, then you just get this guy. Hopefully you have like around two or three big guys so that when you play this, um, you don't, you know, you still have a target because, you know, maybe you accidentally, you know, unfortunately you drew it in your opening hand, but the rest of the cards are still good. So you didn't mulligan. Well, damn, then this thing has zero targets and you play a three minute one, one and you feel terrible. And then you throw it away with one of those discard abilities later on. And it's like, okay, well, at least, you know, if it filled that purpose in... So for that reason, I'd say if you have a couple of uh, big dudes, yeah, three out of five there. It guarantees that you hit that late game. To, it doesn't really guarantee you hit that late game. It guarantees if you hit the late game, you'll be ahead to that degree. I mean, you'll have a plan. In standard, I don't believe that there are so many things you want to play that are six or greater. Aside from, like, what? Uh, Dream Trawler? Yeah, that's a great card. Don't get me wrong. But... I don't think you need Fierce Empath to help you reliably get Dream Trawler. I think you can just draw cards and get to anyway and scry it and do all your nonsense. So in standard, 0 out of 5. In limited, 3 out of 5. If you can do it. If not, 0 out of 5. I'm kidding. You need to have a few big guys. Okay. Fungal Rebirth. A 3 minute instant return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If a creature died this turn, create two one one green sapling creature tokens. I like this card. I think it's pretty good. I mean, I think in standard is a 0 to 5. Don't get me wrong. Nah, don't, don't put those words into my mouth. In standard, it is garbage. But in limited, where things are probably going to die and 3 mana make 2 one ones and get a permanent back from your graveyard, absolutely, that is a playable card. Yeah, 3 out of 5 there too. 
again, you need to have cards of higher value. But, I mean, if you're not getting good cards, then what are you doing playing the game? Am I right? Yeah, I mean, you're at the mercy of the packs, though. For, uh, for real. Oh, Garuk's... Garrick? No, I'm gonna say Garuk. Uh, Gorehorn, that's a name. Sounds like a genre in a certain type of video you could be watching. But anywho, uh, 5 mana, 7, 3. Uh, in standard, it's a 0 out of 5. If you want to play something that sizable, you play Rotting Regisaur. Even though it has a downside, it costs 2 less mana, which is lovely. Um, yeah. In limited, it's like... A 2.5 maybe a 3 out of 5 if you have that one blue enchantment the the rousing reed that can give it flying then that's amazing you have a 7-3 flyer and they're still gonna kill it but you know like it, just think of this as expensive removal basically it's a big old big old wall guy and then that's what you got there so 2.5 out of 5 in limited 0 to 5 standard Ah, oh, more Garrick. Okay, Garruk's Harbinger. That's how you say it. You have to say it at that pace, otherwise uh, YouTube demonetizes you. So, 3 mana, 4, 3. Uh, Hexproof from Black, which is cool, because Black is known for killing things. Um, Does not die as a Doomblade. A. Whenever this card deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, look at the, look at that many cards. From the top of your library, you may reveal a creature card or Garrick, Planeswalker. I I actually usually call him Garuk, but now that I'm thinking about it, I want to call him Garrick. Oh, why are you so weird, Brain? Why are you so strange? Okay. Anyway, you reveal a creature or Garuk, Planeswalker, from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So you see you reveal... It is only a single one from the card you reveal. And the most you're gonna get is four of this alone. If you buff it, then sure it's gonna get more. But that's pretty. I mean, okay, three mana, four, three protection from extra from black. Yeah, that's like baseline three point five out of five for limited. Maybe even four to five, just because the stats are good. Um, and the fact that if it connects, you can just look for creatures and stuff. Four to five limited, easy, very very good card. This is quite nice. Even if it doesn't connect, you got some good value for this um, for the mana there. In standard, I don't quite think it's going to see too much play there. I'll say two out of five standard, it could see play, but don't count this thing getting through. If you can give it trample somehow, maybe you have something like I don't know, the Domri related, um, Ravnica sort of everything has trample or everything has riot or I forget the cards were called, but. Um, if you can have some way to give this thing trample, then sure, go for it, and that's going to be fantastic. If you don't, though, maybe run like one or two and see how it goes. But I would still say two out of five, and I'd say two out of five, three out of five standard, four out of five limited. There we are. Oh my god, Garuk, just get here already. I see you. You're right behind the car. Just, just come forth. All right. Three mana enchantment for Garuk's Uprising. When it enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw a card. And creatures you can draw a trample. Oh, well, oh. there we go. I was talking about giving trample. Here it is. Found it. Found it. They work together. They, they harmonize beautifully. You know, one of them is that perfect, like, you know, F sharp, which is like really shrill to the ears. But the other one's like a nice, like, G flat. And they're like, whoa, my goodness. I have no idea if those two sound good, which I probably should have an idea because I know music a little bit. Anyway, music, magic, same thing, right? Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. The template of this card is very, very nice. Uh, reminiscent somewhat of guild summit back in the day when when guild gates were like so good guild summit was one of the cards that really helped push the deck because it was the card draw thing you would play that same like kind of mana cost same uh came down turn three and it had the thing of if you played it early then all the gates you played afterwards let you draw a card if you play it late you can tap however many gates you want to draw cards for each one so it's good early or late in the game it doesn't punish you for not drawing it right away um, so yeah, I would just go ahead and say in limited, this is like a 2.5 out of 5. I would probably try to play this card in limited and just try to pick things with four or more power and just 
go crazy and be like, okay, you got the early game, but the mid game belongs to me. And also the late game, because, you know, more power. In standard, I think it's a little too slow. I don't really think it's going to get you there. Um, it's probably comparable to the Great Henge, and the Great Henge sees no play right now. Or limited play in mono green. And this, although it is usually cheaper, I'll say, than the Great Henge, on average, I don't believe that the payoff is really quite there. So yeah, like the Great Henge, it buffs your creature, and you draw a card, and you can tap it for two mana, and gain two life. This doesn't do that many things. So zero to five limited, but, no, no sorry. Three to five limited, but zero to five standard. Dunzo. Here he is, finally, you know, I mean, oh my goodness, it's about time. I can't even, I don't even have a watch on, but I can tell that you're late. Okay, so four mana for a four loyalty planeswalker, plus one, up to one target creature, gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until another turn. Giving free giant growth plus trample is something to keep an eye on. Don't think that this is just, eh, whatever, just a throwaway ability. No, that creature is real. All right, um, minus two, create a three, three beast creature token. Oh, create an elk, Ugh, no. Um, then if an opponent controls more creatures than you, put a loyalty counter on, on Garuk un Unleashed. So it is potentially just a minus one to make a three, three if your opponent has more creatures after you make the token. So it's nice that it kind of tries to protect itself that way. But at the same time, it isn't that same kind of like removal that you usually get in other cards. But this is green we're talking about now. So really, it's very on point for green. Minus seven, you get an emblem with at the beginning of your end step, you may search your library for a creature card. Put it into the battlefield and top of your library. Hello, Planar Bridge. How you doing? So, yeah. Excuse me here, but this guy's pretty good. I don't hate him at all. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and say how I usually do. But anywho, and whatever the things I say too often. Mm, like, you want creatures, want creatures on the board, but can make you a three-three. I'm goes to five the turn you play it. Mm. 4.5 out of 5. I can't get myself to say 5 out of 5 unlimited. I can't quite push it all the way to the top there. I don't know exactly what's holding me back. Maybe just that plus one needs you to have a creature on the board and it doesn't last until, you know, it comes, it doesn't last during your opponent's turn. So it doesn't really protect itself very well. In standard, I don't think this will see much play, but I'm going to go ahead and say 2.5 out of 5 because I think that there's enough going for it right now that I could be overlooking something. So based on just green going places and doing things well and working well with this card, two and a half out of five in standard, four and a half out of five in limited. All right, Gnarled Sage, or should I say Gnarled? Yes, that's that's the correct pronunciation, Gnarled. All right, Treebeard, how you doing, buddy? So for five man, you get a four fourth reach. As long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn, it gets plus two, plus zero, plus two, and has vigilance. Don't know why, but it does. Um, because reasons, right? Because because magic says so. Because Mark Rosewater decreed it would be so. All right. Um. <laughs> and standard is zero to five, and limited and having reach is actually a pretty good thing. Because like I said before, there are a decent number of flyers in the set to be aware of. It is not unreasonable to consider um, that your opponent will have one or two in their deck, just like regardless of who you're facing. So for that reason, yeah, sure, it's like a, a two out of five, just because, you know, even though it's five minute four four, as you get higher up there and like as the stats just get bigger, it's usually a little more reasonable to pay more for stats, even though they might not be completely on par. So yeah, two out of five in a limited, unless you have some like of those synergies with this sort of power four or greater in that case, then it can bump, be bumped up to a three out of five, but in standard is terrible. Heroic Intervention, two mana instant speed, permanent you control, gain hexproof, and indestructible in time turn. A little story here, um, those two keywords are extremely powerful, and for a little while I was trying to make a deck in magic that kind of focused around those two things as being like guess what i have things you can't kill them therefore i will win unfortunately it didn't really come to fruition but it did play through with a few pretty good cards 
it did you know get a few of them to the top um of the i don't know what i'm trying to say here it brought a few of those cards to light to me and i was like wow this card's actually really good i just couldn't bring enough of them together especially in like just a few colors not going all like rainbow thing and it didn't really work out there but the cards that say this that are playable are hella playable okay so that being said um this card's insane and i love it and i know i watched jim davis's review and he's like people overhype this card so much it's not that good i think it's fantastic i don't care the fact that it's just permanence means you can use this to protect your creatures and your planeswalkers and your shrines and whatever the hell else you want to protect that's insane this is basically like a green counter spell i mean we did have veil of summer for all of like a few months but then that had to go away um was it a couple months or just one month i don't know for a little while and then it was banned in multiple formats mind you so this is reminiscent of that to a degree of course you don't draw a card which is really why um, i had to get banned because it was just it did that which didn't really need to um but yeah i think this card's fantastic in i'm just gonna i'm gonna say it five out of five in both formats this card's great i love it it completely just breaks open board states um stalled board states and if your opponent's like yeah i'm just gonna play this board wipe no i'm, I'm just, all my creatures will not be touched this turn oh damn and hexproof so i can't know mm. but um ah Oh, you got okay hunter's edge four mana sorcery put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control then that creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control so it's nice i think they call this like a prey upon effect where it is a one-sided fight i just deal damage to your thing if you do this with a creature that has death touch then the other creature that you're attacking essentially will die because that creature is dealing damage your creature with that touch deal damage. And the fact that you're also putting a plus one plus one counter means it lingers around a little bit. There is more, at least something behind. It isn't just, I removed your creature, cool. Now what? It is, my creature is stronger, and I kill your creature, and now I get to punch you in the face because I haven't actually gone th through combat yet. Hooray! So, in limited, I'll put this in like a 2.5 out of 5. Pretty pretty nice thing there. Maybe even a 3 out of 5 if you have uh, some juicy boys. And 0 to 5 in standard because, no. Um, no, we already have Dormy's Ambush, which does the same thing, but it costs half, so, yeah. Okay, Invigorating Surge. For three mana, you get an instant speed, put a plus one percent counter on target creature control, then double the number of counters on that creature, just that creature. Um, in standard zero to five, although Galloping Lizrog is hilarious, um, however, in limited, this is... At minimum, three mana, put two plus one plus one counters on creature control. Cool, cool. It's all right. Um, for that, I would say. Pardon me. It's like a two out of five sort of thing because the counters stay there. If it was just plus two plus two till on the turn, that's terrible. For three mana, that is atrocious. That is one of the worst cards. <laughs> but the fact that it is counters and they stay there for a little while, cool. Okay. I can I can live with that. I can give that a two out of five and not really feel bad. And if you have more synergy with it, if you have more things that give counters, then you get even more. And instead of plus two plus two, you get uh, at minimum you know four four or six six or something. It's it's pretty nice there. So good stuff there. I'm going to leave this at a two out of five in limited unless you have a sizable amount of control, not control, uh, of synergy. In which case it can go up to like. A 2.5 out of 5 i wouldn't really put it beyond that though because it still is three mana you're paying and the target will be somewhat obvious so just be aware if your opponent's attacking with their creature that has a counter on it and there's no reason to really do so they probably have this card if they're playing green and have three mana left over if that's not the case then something else is afoot or your opponent is an idiot okay uh let's see <laughs> Oh my goodness, you hear that, Jimmy? He just called you an idiot. What? Well, I'm playing against you right now, and you're my opponent, so... I said they might be an idiot. It's okay, Jimmy. And you know what? It's a learning opportunity. Anyway, um... Let me give this another shot here, okay? Jorel? Is it Jorel? 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 Jorel. Jorel Monvuli. 
Recluse. Is it one really one really recluse or is it like a name and they just did like the whole like you know first name last name thing i don't know <laughs> who knows wizards knows ask them so you get a two minute one two legendary creature whenever you draw your second card each turn which for some reason isn't green i mean they gave the elder gar creature um the ability to draw cards and there's also the enchantment which is you know helping you draw cards so they Garrick's whatever it is so yeah there are ways to draw cards in green but like it's kind of a strange place to see it so whenever you draw your second card each turn create a 2-2 green cat creature token hey things for your cat sovereign Meh. is that what it's called i think it is the cat lord whatever it is or you can pay six and until end of turn creatures you control have base power and toughness xx where x is the number of cards in your hand really strange card to see in green i could see it being played just for the first ability for the second one good luck i don't think it's gonna do a damn thing for you um mm, that was itchy itchy nose itchy nose okay um but yeah it's it's okay if you have those other cards that enable you to draw more cards then sure otherwise the two mana one two and feels really really bad so in limited i'm just going to give it a two out of five because maybe you have the card draw for it if you don't otherwise it's a zero out of five don't don't bother um beyond that in standard i am going to say as well a zero out of five there because we tried that whole like you know card draw matters thing for a little while we put it in blue and red which are two colors which do wonderfully with, with it. I mean, sure, you can use this in Growth Spiral and make a 2-2, hooray, and Euro, and... I don't think that's really worth putting it in your deck. Okay, life goes on. There you go, to everyone who's like, but the card is so nice. It's okay, life goes on. Life goes on right here. Um, Just something in limited, it's like maybe a 1, because it can get you a decent amount of life. In standard, also a 1 out of 5. They should have better cards you can sideboard in against aggro, but... Sanguine Sacrament saw some play, and this is, you know, one mana, maybe gaining a life. Um, I'll just actually read the card what it does. <laughs> life goes on. For one green, you get instant speed, you gain four life. If a creature died this turn, you gain eight life instead. Just some life gain. It's cool. It activates all your life gain abilities. Um, life gain triggers, because I think they all trigger off of three, and you're getting either four or eight, which last I checked are greater than three. Not less than three. Sorry, heart, but, like, you know, not quite there. That's okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, it's a one out of five both ways because maybe it's relevant, and eight life is a decent amount to come back from. You know, it, it can be enough to get you like another turn or two and maybe win the game. But it on itself, it, it doesn't. If you don't have any life gain, um, in limited, if you don't have any life gain payoffs, throw this card away. In standard, maybe if you're trying to just play mono green and have an answer to um aggro decks. Otherwise, play Gruul or play Golgari and have removal. Okay, Llanowar Visionary. So this is a lovely combination of Llanowar Elves and Elvis Visionary together as one. Um, literally, this, this those two cards just smashed together, except they made it two generic mana and a green instead of one green green. So for three mana, you get a 2-2. Two, two. You can tap it to add one green, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. This is a nice card. I'm not, this is like a solid card to see play at all. I would make it like a 3 out of 5 limited. I think it's fine. And standard is kind of slow if you're going to try to use it for the ramp. And the card draw is also kind of slow. I mean, it directly competes for Euro, for a spot with Euro because it's a very, very similar thing. But the fact that you can even compare it to Euro means maybe. Maybe it's okay. So like 2 out of 5 in standard, I'm going to say. It might actually see some stuff. And 3 out of 5 unlimited because it's slightly better than those on that format okay ornery dilophosaur ornery velociraptor you can you know pay four mana for a 2-2 death touch and whenever it attacks you if you control a creature with power four or greater this gets plus two plus two and you'll end a turn so best case scenario you paid four mana for a four four otherwise it's four mana for a two two with death touch as far as death touch is concerned to hell with power you just have to have enough toughness and like one power at least you know to survive the fight that is it 
but I don't really think buffing death touch things really does a whole lot for you these days, unless it's, you know, questing beast is good. But consider this as a four mana 2 2 death touch, and then you'll be like, wow, this card's really, really bad because I paid four mana for this piece of garbage. So, zero out of five, unlimited. I, zero out of five. I'm not even going to give it a one. It's terrible. Um, but five out of five standard, of course. No, no, it's, it's zero to five both ways because, you know, it's actually not a Velociraptor. If it was only for Velociraptor, five out of five. Based on flavor alone, because they are delicious. All right. Uh, Port Callus Vine, a one mana zero three wall defender thingy. You could pay two and sacrifice it. Um, or sacrifice another creature with defender, whatever. And draw a card. Odds are you're going to be sacrificing this card. Uh, this is a reprint, by the way. I've seen this you know, before. It's, it's kind of nice to see. Standard zero to five. Doesn't see any play at all. In limited, like, like a one out of five. It can you know, hold off things for a little while, and then when it is fulfilled its purpose, when it is grown old, or when you've grown tired of it, then you can just throw it away, draw a card. It's okay, but it's not really what you want to be doing. Honestly, it's kind of a... not the plan you want to be on. Yeah, but when I'm done with the use of this, I can draw a card. When you don't have any use for blocking things with a 0-3, you have bigger problems, don't you? Okay. Oh, look, Pride Malkin. I don't know, is a Malkin actually like a type of cat or something? I, Because there's Dread Malkin, which is the zombie cat. Maybe it is. Maybe I should Google that later on. Yeah, let me just Google that for you real quick. So for three mana, you get a 2-1 cat. When it enters the battlefield, you put a plus one plus one counter on target creature control. That's that's cool. You, for three mana, you get a 3-2 a when, you know, the plus one plus one counters energy. Nothing wrong with that. Also, the cat, there is... Some very, very slight cat support here, so that's cool, I guess. Each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has trample. There are zero things wrong with this card. So for that reason, it's going to be a, I'll say, I'll say 2.5 out of 5. Because you can add the counter to something else and help you push over um, your opponent's creatures. Help it to become the king of the hill, I don't know, to have the, the, the highest power and toughness. You know, be the big strong creature it always knew it could be. In... Standard zero out of five, but unlimited two point five out of five. All right, primal might. I was trying to think of a joke here. I was like, yes, primal might, like, like the primal might. It might not, but primal might as well. I don't know. Here we'll go with, we'll go along the pun route. Well, that'll always hit well. Okay. For X and a green, you get a sorcery. Target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn. Then it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Worth noting that it actually is fighting, so they do damage to each other. If the opponent's creature has death touch, then you're in for a hard time. You're in for a lesson there, buddy. But otherwise, it's kind of cool. Um, It's basically another form of like the, the heat ray fireball sort of thing. Except then you can also still attack with a creature after it fights the thing. Hopefully you got something out of the way and then now you're swinging in with a bigger dude. Nice effect there. Nothing wrong with that. In limited, I'm going to put this at a 3 out of 5. I think it's pretty solid there. In standard, 2 out of 5, it might see some play there. It just might. It might not, but it might. Quarian Dryad. 2 mana, 1, 1. Whenever you cast a spell that's white, blue, black, or red, so not green, but also not colorless, um, put a plus one counter on Quarian Dryad. If you are splashing green... But you're splashing it for this card, you're doing it wrong. I do not like this card at all. I think this card is asking too much, even though it's as, just asking to play a second color. I don't think the payoff is there. I don't see it. Therefore, 1 out of 5 unlimited, 0 out of 5 standard. Moving on. Okay, here we go. That's how I'm going to make things go faster. I'm just going to say no. Ranger's Guile. I'm sure that like that skin tone, that bark skin kind of makes like a little people like queasy or whatever. I think it's fine. I actually do kind of like that um that art thingy. I don't know. I like the the artwork here. And I don't know why. I just think it's nice. Target creature gets you control gets plus one plus one and gains hex proof until the end of the turn. Just a neat little little thing there, a little like care which is blessing, but it doesn't give it indestructible, it just gives it hex proof, which is largely going to be used to hose a kill spell. So that's fine to play like one or two of these in your limited deck, but really no more than that. I would rather have, you know, other kill spells, just more creatures to to throw in there. So for that reason, uh like a two out of five. Yeah, it's it's okay, it's fine. In standard, it's is useless, so get it out of here. Zero out of five. Okay, return to nature, reprint, we see it, we like it, it does a good job for what it does. 
Um, there are other cards that do similar things that just kind of overshadow this thing. Like you have your soul guide lantern to exile things, so that kind of takes care of that bottom effect. And then if you're trying to destroy artifacts or enchantments, there are just other things. I mean, usually there aren't too many mono green decks that would even consider running this card. Therefore, you can run green with black and destroy anything you want to. Assassin's Trophy, woo! Or Farika's Libation, but that's kind of tricky. Uh, or you can just run uh, white, and white has plenty of removal for enchantments and, source and uh, artifacts. And Knight of Autumn is also, like, you know, top tier. So... At least I think it is. I think Vant is okay. So for that reason, this is a, an okay card. In Limited, I would not play this card. I mean, you could put this in your sideboard in Limited if you're even sideboarding at all. So like one out of five there. In Constructed, zero out of five, but it's nice to just keep it around. It's a solid reprint. Run a foul. Not running a muck, you're running a foul. That's when you step on a chicken just the right way. And it's like, you know what? Sacrifice. Um, okay, so you have one green instant speed target opponent and sacrifices your creature with flying. So essentially, um, the dream here is you kill a dream trawler or a baneslayer angel or the big old scary dragon guy over there. It's like, yeah, you sacrifice that for one green, which is how much this should cost because the card's actually complete trash. Um, zero to five. You could sideboard this thing unlimited, but still zero to five both ways. I don't. I don't care. It's bad, and you should feel bad. Okay, Sabertooth Mauler, 4 minute 3-3 three, three at the beginning of your end step. If a creature died this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Sabertooth Mauler and untap it. Pretty pretty legit card, not gonna lie there. I'm gonna say like 2.5 out of 5 unlimited, 0 out of 5 standard, but the fact that the counter goes on it, so it keeps the stats, is nice. And the untap is like a little bonus there. Just a little upside, like hey, by the way, if something died, it can block, by the way. Cool, I like it. 2.5 out of 5, like I said. Standard, get out of here. Oh my goodness, I said get out of here, and like, the, the breath was out of my body in the form of hiccup. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're good. Moving forward. We have our green shrine, Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest. I, I don't see any fruit. I see what looks like the lavender of the sky. Are they grapes? Maybe they're grapes? Are they like white and... And, and and red grapes? I'm gonna keep saying grapes. Grapes? Okay, that's the last one. So, um, <laughs> I'm glad I got all those out of me. Alright, so for three mana, you get this thing at the beginning of your pre combat main phase. Add X mana of any one color where X is the number of shrines you control. It's ramp. It's a little bit of ramp for three. It doesn't seem that great. Um, so, in limited, I would say zero to five. Why are you trying to play this for ramp? Just, I mean, Literally just play a land. <laughs> just literally play a land. Unless you have like three shrines and like, okay, sure, maybe you ramp with a good amount and suddenly you're having a good time. Even then, just play a land. Zero out of five unlimited. And in standard, if you're making a shrine deck happen, the fact that this can just kind of get you other colors of mana that you might need because it's probably going to be a rainbow shrine deck or a whole Wooberg if you want to if you want to name it that then sure one out of five because you're gonna be running it and it might help you out here and there it does nothing to the board though so get over yourself it's, oh right i forgot this was a reprint so you know how euro is a huge thing that we start comparing a lot of things to all the ramp and green is compared to euro and compared pretty poorly aside from growth spiral which is good um yeah so i'm gonna sit up straight for this one as well scavenging ooze two mana two two you can pay just one green mana, an exile target card from a graveyard. Usually your opponent's graveyard. Just gonna throw that out there. Just gonna give you a little, a little tip, a little tip there. You usually want to go for your opponent's things. If it was a creature card, put a plus one plus one counter on scavenging use, and you gain one life. So, um, what was that? Was that a cat screeching in the distance? I believe so. I believe that like, you know we're in the past. I have tried to counter the cat oven deck with mono black i know it's funny um and time merit where you pay two mana and you can try to chase the cat around and see if you can outcost it this is one mana and you get to do a similar thing which is much less than two which means you're going to catch up to that cat pretty soon and you can also just get euros out of the way and croxes out of the way and 
whatever remove the entire graveyard so Luris does a whole lot of nothing this card is great and it's a two mana two two just baseline like limited four to five easily four to five sure it might not always hit creatures but two mana two two at worst it's just fine and then as soon as you start putting anything into it putting any mana as soon as it starts eating anything and digesting make sure you digest um you know proper digestion is key i guess that's what happened with things that aren't instant or sorcery it's just kind of like burps it back out it's like didn't really get much out of it okay um but yeah like four to five unlimited in standard this is 100 percent going to see sideboard play against euro like i said against cats against loris against decks that you just don't like i don't know against you can even put this in against aggro and just could you gain life for it So, considering this is going to definitely see sideboard play, in my opinion, I'm just going to go ahead and say 5 out of 5, even though the sideboard card it is, it's amazing at what it does. It does a fantastic job of, it's probably the best answer for cats and euros that we've gotten yet. And yes, I'm including Grafdigger's Cage. Moving forward, Cetison, Cetison, Cetison Training. It's a very, very soon reprint, very, very... Um, you know, we didn't really get too far away from this card. It's still in standard, and now it's going to be in standard a little bit longer. Two mana, we know what it does. It's okay. Um, the fact that it gives trample is nice. Enchantment, you draw a card, plus one with zero and trample. Um, cool. And limited, this is like a, you know, two out of five. Only because it replaces itself and gives trample. If it didn't do those two things, and then the plus one plus zero is kind of cool. If it didn't do those um, two things, they would be useless. In standard, it's all right. It sees play in the Selesny Auras deck, and that's pretty much it. So, and that deck isn't really quite at the top of the list here, but I'm just gonna say like it. I think it's performing at around a one out of five sort of thing. Really, all that glitter is LC of Life's bounty of the cards that make it work. Otherwise, it doesn't like really do too much. All right, you have for one mana a Skyway Sniper, a one two with reach. Look, it's an archer and it has reach, as all archers should. And Skeleton Archer just like, I shot one arrow. But that was it, that's all I had. I guess, I guess he ran out pretty quickly. It's when he's just uh, like, taking off your freaking femur, you're like, I'm gonna shoot you with this bone! Oh my god, title of your sex tape. Title of your sex tape. Damn, if you say that, you gotta say it one time and get it right. Ah, uh, maybe next time. Anywho, one mana, one two reach. Uh, for three mana, this deals one damage to target creature with flying. So if you hate flyers, you can Attempt to continually shoot them out of the sky. If you don't hate flyers, then it's okay. I'm just, I mean, one minute one two is okay though. In limited, um, yeah, two out of five, it's all right. There's gonna be some flyers. This might be able to kill a couple of them, and that'll feel pretty good. In standard, you have better options. So zero. A uh, snare spinner, two mana one three with reach. Oh boy, look at that. We added one mana, and we added one toughness. Whenever Snare Spinner blocks a creature with flying, it gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. This is like a two out of five unlimited. Don't kid yourself and think that it's going to be a three, three all the time because my opponent's playing some flyers. No. And in standard, like I said, there are better ways to deal with creatures, flyers, creatures in general. You will not put this even if you're facing so many. I'm going to go out of limb and say that even if like a flyers deck makes it to the top ranks i don't think this card will see play so i mean to a certain degree this actually can keep it in check but also there are just so many other cards that just remove the creatures they don't have to worry about like surviving and blocking whatever so zero out of five standard two out of five in limited did i say two out of five yeah two out of five sure all right uh spore web weaver Three mana for a one four, you know, you you keep keeping the toughness going up and the power staying the same. Ew. Like this is yeah, one mana, one two. Two mana, one three. Three mana, one four. Four mana, one five. Oh no, never mind, sorry. Um so this is a rare as well. Reach and hexproof from blue. Cool, why not blue? I don't know. Eh, fine. Whenever it is dealt damage, you gain one life. And make a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token. Aggro will hate you forever. Because you block their thing. You gain the life. You make a blocker as well. Even if this only triggers like twice, they're going to despise you until the end of their days. Like, damn that freaking spider. So I guess lucky for aggro, this is rare. For that, 
specific reason, I think this could actually see some sideboard play in Constructed. Therefore, one out of five there. I think there's still kind of better options, but maybe we'll see play. In Limited, it's like a two out of five. It's just okay. For three mana, you can probably block like two things and make, you know, a couple tokens and feel all right and maybe get your life gain stuff going and potentially, you know, see yourself through to better days. Thrashing Bronted on reprint. Three mana, three, four dino. You can pay one and sack it and destroy an artifact or enchantment. It's cool. We don't really see any of these because there are just better ways to destroy things, but it's a solid body. Three mana, three, four even. In limited, like, yeah, this is like a 2.5 out of 5. Maybe even a 3 out of 5 because it's just, just, it's good at what it does. It has good stats for the cost. It has an extra ability just because why not? Yeah, it's nice. Uh, in standard, it's usually, it's like a 2 out of 5. You see it every now and then, here and there, you know, like maybe I want to play the card, maybe not. It's, it's actually fine, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Card's cool. Titanic growth, 0 to 5 in standard, and like 2 out of 5 in limited. It's not giant growth. It wants to be, but apparently they don't really print out the card anymore. So that's that. I would play maybe one of these in your deck, if any. Otherwise... It, one out of five limited, zero out of five standard. There we go. I found the right spot for it. Track down. As opposed to tracking up where like that's where Spider-Man lives. Alright, um, so you have a two mana sorcery, scry three, then reveal the top card of your library. If and only if. It's a creature card or land card. Draw a card. It does say draw a card, so you know, laugh at you in Narset, but otherwise. It's a neat little thing there. Um it's just the wording, whatever, the templating is you know, so I guess you do have to reveal, yeah, you have to reveal the top card. Um, and if you look at the top three cards, you like, you know, if you scry three and you just see no creatures or lands or nothing you really want, then you can put it at the bottom, maybe the top card's pretty good. Maybe it's a creature or a land. It's nice. You can also, uh, in standard, zero out of five, don't get me wrong there. In limited, though, I'm going to give like a three out of five. If you want to potentially get a play around like a duress sort of effect or an agonizing remorse, that wouldn't really be unlimited, but whatever. Um, maybe it's in some sort of sealed thing where you draft that pack. But you can keep, like, a land on top, and, or just, like, you know, whatever you want to on top, and then keep the actual big creature that you want to protect second from the top, because, you know, the card draw. Or, yeah, because the way you have to reveal it, yeah, it's a thing there. So you can kind of bury that a little bit and, you know, keep it safe for an extra turn. Uh, so what did I say? Yeah, I said like limited 3 out of 5, the standard 0 out of 5. Cool, cool. All right, keep on going. Truffle Snail, look, oh my god, he's so happy. Look at this, it's like, I did it again. I'm doing such a good job. I'm the best pig. Look at this pig. It's like, it's a wonderful pig. I got a little pig right over here, don't I? There you go, look at that pig. It is crocheted, not by me, but it is a wonderful pig indeed. Okay, so let's actually talk about the pig now. 3 mana, 2, 2. 5 out of 5, because it's a pig. I, I just, look at the, I, you can't. Ah, oh, you can't be upset and look at this card. Those two things do not collide in this world. All right, um, or then they do collide, the, the Truffle Snout wins. Um, when it enters the battlefield, choose one. Either put a plus one plus one counter on Truffle Snout, or you gain four life. In all seriousness, standard zero to five. In limited, yeah, it's, it's cool. I, I like it. You're probably going to make it a three mana three, three more often than you're going to gain the life. But since you do have those, you know, life gain triggers, then... 2.5 out of 5, maybe? Like, it's kind of cool. But he's so happy. I will never be upset pulling this card. Never. Not once. If someone passes me this card, I will be ecstatic. I might not take it, but I'll be happy to, to, to see the guy. See the piggy? Does it have a flavor text? Its exploits are the stuff of legends among local chefs and fuel for nightmares among the local salads. Oh, the forest salads. Oh, okay, okay I, I get you. Mushroom people. It's so happy, though. It doesn't mean any harm. Okay. Uh, Warden of the Woods. <laughs> Sorry, I like pigs. Um, six mana, five, seven with vigilance. Whenever it becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, you may draw two cards. Guys, we found a lovely card right here. This is easily a four out of five in limited, potentially even a five out of five. Just it, It's a huge body, and even if your opponent does remove it, you get some cards, you get some value off it anyway. Fantastic card. Truly, truly great thing. It's potentially like a first pickable thing. Um, yeah, there are 
cue cards you would take above this thing. In standard, it's 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 zero out of five. It just doesn't happen. But in limited, like it can actually potentially be a five out of five. That just shows you like the not the spread, but like just the divergence, the difference, the distance. I don't know. It shows you how different the two formats are. Going on, Wildwood Scourge. Uh, you get a Hydra here, uh, X and a green, which is, you know, kind of usual Hydra things. There's an X in there somewhere. Uh, enters the battlefield with X plus almost one counters, as you expected. And whenever one or more uh, plus almost one counters are put on another non-Hydra creature you control, you also add a creature to this, you also add a counter to this one. So other things grow when this thing grows, just coincidentally. Nice, I like it. It's pretty solid. In limited, like a 3.5 out of 5, if you have extra... Um, plus one plus one counter synergy, and then you can bump that up to a four out of five, just because it pretty much always it's always playable, basically, except for turn one, where it's like, oh, X equals zero, and it's dead. No. And standard zero to five. Um, that's, even though it's nice, there are better hydras to play, but in limited, yeah, like three of three out of five right there, three, three point five, yeah, it's around that area. And that is it. Oh my goodness, we are sub one hour, so I have to make this outro less than like four minutes long, otherwise it'll go over. No! Alright, let's look at this guy, and he's got his tusks, and he's got his facial hair again, and that, that eye, the glowing eye. So hopefully, um, these reviews were at the very least entertaining, if not informative. Uh, feel free to let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments down below. You can hop in my Discord and go in there and say, You were wrong about this car. I love the pig. I love the pig too. Trust me, I love the pig. We, we have that in common. But yeah, um, and stay tuned for, um, I think they just have the colorless things coming up. Multicolored and colorless, so that's the next one. Beyond that, super excited for this set just because of a few cards. Discontinuity, I apologize for nothing. Um, and also Liliana is really nice. But yeah, um, hopefully you'll tune into the Early Access Streamer event where I'll be taking part in that. As well as probably your favorite streamers because, you know, they give it out to the, the, the popular people and me. Am I popular? Do people know of my existence? Who knows? But if you tune into that, that'd be awesome. Stop by my stream and I'll give you a code for a card and that'll be cool. If not, I hope you have a good time anyway. All good things. And without further ado, good night or good morning, depending on where you are in the world. But as always, good luck at keeping this under an hour, which I did. Hey.